morning. We're on the river today. The river's moving and it's brown. Quite like the river when it's moving. But we're fishing. That means we have the chance of catching a pike. So let's see what today brings, shall we? With fishing in the winter time, things can get slightly hard to see. Your drop arms are orange for a reason, so that you see them in kind of low light. But they don't glow up at the dark, so I have a wee idea how to make these a little bit better. Not sure if you can see that. Enterprise tackle. It's designed to go on your rod tip to make your rod tip glow up at night time with a little starlight. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one of them on the drop arm to see if it works. It's just an idea, huh? if it doesn't work then you know, no harm, no foul so to speak. It takes these little starlights that you crack and here it is. It's a little black thing with a silicone bit of silicone slide over the top of it. When you take the silicone off it, it opens up. It's kind of fiddly to do it holding holding a camera and talking to you guys. So there you go, that's it open. Now, you see me making all sorts of noise here, I'll just turn this alarm off for the time being. Close this down and let it fall, let it go onto the bait runner. Well, that is not going to the bait runner. Right, I'm going to have to pause here and I'm going to put this on here. So there you have it. That's it on the drop arm. Now obviously to make this light up you just snap it and it'll glow, it glows for like 8 hours. So on a night time, you would be sitting in your bivvy, now you, maybe you not see this. Maybe there's been some disaster with your delcoms or your alarms that's not working. But if you look out your bivvy and you see this little glow stick pointing up towards the reel, it means it's still good. If it's pointing sideways, then it means that it's not good, it means it's clipped out. What do you see? And it'll move up and down. And it doesn't interfere with the drop arm at all. It doesn't add any real weight to it. It just moves up and down and lights up the lights up the drop arm. So a wee idea. So there we go. Tips, tricks, and handy hints for you. And I haven't even started the video properly. Gonna have a cup of coffee, make a bacon sandwich, and chill out. The river's very coloured, so I'm gonna have to introduce oils and stuff to my baits. Doesn't bother me. I quite like putting oil in my bait. I'm just trying to put something in the water column so that if the fish can have an extra, because if they're trying to hunt, in, in muddy water, it kind of limits their sense of their eyesight. They can't really see things that well. So if you add scent into the water, then it's adding an extra thing that maybe the pike can find it. That because it's like a scent, it's like an oil. It's going to drift down the down the river flow, and that might bring fish up to the bits. But it's just a plan. Nothing's going to happen until I have a cup of coffee. I've got the unhooking mat sorted out. I've got the rods all in. I'm fishing on the inside of a bend here, so the main flow of the river is on the far side to me. So because this is like a big eddy, back eddy, 
it'll hold the, the coarse fish, the shoal fish. There was a match here at the weekend and the guys did, did quite well for, you know, autumn fishing matches here. So I'm hoping the shoal fish are still here. And because the shoal fish are here, the pike should be here. Having to use five ounce leads, even in the back eddy. I started off with a three ounce lead that just was bouncing down the river, so that's even in the, the back eddy. Five ounce lead keeps it pinned. The last thing you, it's going to be near impossible if your baits, if your lead's moving, you can't really get a decent bite indication. Speaking of bite indication, did I mention that I have sorted you guys out with a bit of a deal for the drop arms that I use? Drop arms I got are from made from a guy called Pete Foster, cracking bloke. Advanced Predator products. If you go to him and you're asking for the drop arms, if you're feel like ordering a set of them, well then quote DSAA when you order, and Pete will waive the P and P fees. I know, I'm looking out for you, I really am. But anyway, I'm going to let this kettle boil, get a good cup of coffee, and I will update you if anything else happens in the near five to next, the next five to ten minutes. I can't see it happening, I want a cup of coffee first. Later. It is half past one in the afternoon. The run that I got was only popped up trout or salmon par. I'll show you a photograph of this one. That's how I pop it up. Now it's using those dynamite baits, uh, pop-up boilies. They're designed for cat fishing. I quite like them. I think that they're very good. I have them in a little tub and every now and then I drizzle some salmon oil into them. They're still, you know, amazingly buoyant. Still smell of salmon. I don't know what they're meant to smell of, but they don't smell of, you know, anything fish related that I would have ever smelled. But by putting a little bit of salmon oil on it, and they absorb it, and topping it up again. Now I topped this up a couple times. Now there's no oil on it. But they're all still super buoyant. I mean, one of these is enough to pop up a... I mean, this is the size of them. I have these in yellow and I have uh, pink ones as well, so... They're pretty good. I quite like them. They definitely work. Well, the pike that I had... Took the trout that was floating. They're popped up with these, so... It isn't so bad. Getting kind of pestered by dog walkers though. I am a dog owner. I have a dog. It's only manners that when you take your dog somewhere, like to a natural beauty spot, and the dog has a turd, that you pick up the dog turd and you put it in the bin. So, I only had to remind three dog walkers today that their dog has Drop the dog egg, it needs to be picked up. I love the dog walkers who see their dog taking the crap and decide to shuffle and move a bit faster in the hope that if they if they run away a bit faster then they don't have to pick up after their dog. If you can't be bothered picking up after your dog, don't have a dog. Don't have a pet. Or the, the firm favourite. You're fishing on a wooden jetty. It's very obvious that you're fishing on a wooden jetty. A dog walker will take dog right the way to the very end of the wooden jetty where you have the rods on the rod pod or bank sticks. And you just think, 
what's the point of doing that? Well, the, the best one today was I had my, I was changing bait, swapping bait out, I had the bait bucket open and this little Jack Russell type dog head straight into the bait bucket and I got a mouthful from the owner saying, you know, I shouldn't be leaving stuff lying around, her dog could eat it. It was more a case of, why isn't your dog on a fucking lead? Why aren't you controlling your animal? If the dog picked up a bit with a has a trace in it, then that's an expensive trip to the vet. And whose fault is it? Is it my fault that somebody else's dog has has et a bit with a trace on it? Don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm not. I would hate to be cruel to animals, but idiot, idiot dog owners. Idiot humans is what annoys me. <laughs> humans. Oh, we're having a tinkle on the big mackerel rod. It could just be the wind. Mm. From a natural beauty spot. And then. Uh, Throw a bag of fucking beer cans in the bushes. Why not? Humans. Little gear review for you guys. I got a bit wet here, so I had to put the bivvy up, or the, the brolly up, just to kind of hide under it for a little bit. Ridge Monkey. Now, I know I have slagged off Ridge Monkey for some of their pots and pans being, you know, Tippy as a tippy motherfucker can tippy be. But they brought out this thing here. Now you may be asking, what is that for? Well, it's got a metal plate that goes on the outside of your bivvy and two magnets. That's the wind. And that hangs up on the inside of your bivvy. Now, the carp guys will hang it up and put single hooks in it, but it, it works equally as well to hang up your rigs and keep your rigs out of the way. I don't know about you guys, but I like to have... I like to have some rigs sitting ready to go. There'll be times where I can't do it today because there's too many dog walkers and I'm kind of paranoid about a dog eating the trace. But there'll be times where I would have the rigs bait on the trace and everything sitting ready to rock and roll. So if I do get a run and I get the pike in the net, I can unhook the I can unclip the trace, clip on a new trace, put the rod out into the water, and kind of then deal with unhooking the pike. That way you're kind of you're not you're not you're not wasting time, you're not, you know, kind of sitting with like that rod out of the water. There's been times where I've caught pike, you know, in very, very quick succession. I mean, if the pike's in a shoal, if they're in a little group of them themselves, and they're kind of, like, exploring a little bit of river, and they come across your bait, then one will take it, you know, if it feels like taking it. But by putting another bait in there straight away, you know, that's generating a bit more, of in bit more interest for them. So, it's just something that's very easy to do so I thought why not share it with you guys I mean I know the carp guys will have you know six million rigs made up ready to rock and roll and every hook has to be you know sharpened within an inch of its balls and held under a magnifying glass to make sure it's sharpened thank Christ that pike angling isn't, isn't like that just yet but that little thing from Ridge Monkey the, the hangman or whatever it's called what's it called again? Yeah, the hangman, ridge monkey hangman. Just for even, say you have a trace that you've unhooked from the pike and you just you don't want it to have it like laid on the ground. You know, just hanging it up 
on the inside of that there so it's out of the way. That's a great idea. No, it's 12 quid. And you might be saying, that's a waste of 12 quid. But I actually think it's kind of handy. Now, I don't know if it would fully hold a dead bit on the rig. I don't know if it would be strong enough to do that. But I know for holding up, you know, a couple of tresses and kept them out of the way, it does the job okay. You know, it's actually... It's a, it's a gadget. You know, we all like gadgets. We're all suckers for gadgets. And it, if it helps keep your, your bivvy or your brolly kind of in some sort of order instead of shambles, then it maybe isn't a bad thing. So there we have it. The Ridge Monkey... Now we've got the fucking tryst tangled in it. The Ridge Monkey Hangman. I'm going to have to go and tighten up that... My Delcom, the blue Delcom, for some reason, the sensitivity isn't really working. With the Delcom TXI, you can go from like zero, where any sort of movement gets a beep, and scroll it down to six, which should mean that every six inches of line taken, it bleeps. Unfortunately, like I said, the blue Delcom, it's almost like it's stuck on the most sensitive setting. Now, in the wind, it means it bleeps every goddamn time. So I'm either going to have to send the Delcom away to get it, you know, serviced or fixed or something. Or maybe have a play with it and see if I can fix it myself. In which case I'll probably break it and then I'll have to buy a new one. Crap. I've seen the new Delcoms. Not a fan. Don't quite like them. They look kind of crap, but that's just me. Anyway, here endeth the gear review. Three hours later. Well, it's just gone seven o'clock. I've had one jack shake itself off and one drop run. The river is still bombing through every cast and kind of getting wiped out by weed and debris, so I think that's time for me to uh, say let's go home and have a, a Chinese takeaway. There hasn't been a lot of action this video, so I kind of apologise for that. You know, I will try and catch fish for you next time. But I want to take this point to say thank you to all the recent subscribers and all the people that's leaving me comments and thumbs up, thumbs downs on the, uh, the videos. It means a lot. I'm going to tell you a wee story. I just had a guy visiting the uh, swim where I'm fishing. He was... How can I put it? He had had some hard times medically. And he came out of his way to kind of come down here and chat to me today and say that he was watching the videos. And when he was laid up and off work with his, his, wee medical, his medical issue, he was uh, saying that watching me talk shit on the internet about fishing helped him get through. So that's blown me away. I don't quite know how what to say. You know, shook the guy's hand and says, it's been great talking to him. And it has been great talking to him. But to have somebody say that when they were struggling and they had a they were in bed, really sick, uh, poor health, watching me talk nonsense about fishing. Got them through it. It's... I don't quite know what to say. So, if he's out there watching, I just want to say a big thumbs up to you. It's been a, it was a great uh, chat we had this afternoon. And I'm going to go home now, have a beer, and have a Chinese takeaway, I think. Apologies for it not being a longer vlog, but the fishing's just not been, they've not been on for him today. Until next time guys, tight lines.